All right, and welcome to our final tutorial. This is where we're going to be using some formulas to solve some real-world situations, and I think that this is one of my favorites. Okay, let's first begin just by listing these four formulas. For arc length, um, it's labeled as an S. I don't know who came up with the S, but arc length is basically your radius times your angle, and I'm going to use a theta. Angular speed is simply how much angle you're cutting out and that's divided by time because it's a speed. Linear speed is very similar except we need to know how much of a radius we have. So it's going to be the radius times the angle which is basically your arc length divided in time. And sector area is basically the area of like a piece of pizza. Area of course big capital A equals one half times radius excuse me times radius squared times your angle. Now the big part of this is all of these angles, all theta, must be in radians. You cannot use an angle that's measured in degrees for any of these four formulas. Your angle must be in radians. You explored arc length in geometry. You explored sector area in geometry. And those formulas in geometry were actually kind of um, complicated because you did not understand radians yet, or you did not know radians yet. Now that we do, these formulas can become a whole lot easier to use, but we must stay in radians. Okay, so we're going to look at two examples here. First, we're going to look at the seconds hand of a clock. So we've got just a visual of a clock and uh, the seconds hand. I'm just going to draw the seconds hand right there. That's the one that moves uh, you know, one second of a time at a time around the clock. Um, I know the length of that seconds hand is 10.2 centimeters. The first thing I want to figure out is what is the angular speed? That's using this formula right up here. So I need the angular speed is the angle divided by the time. I think the easiest angle to use is just, let's say, we, we take the hand and we go all the way around one full circle. In terms of radians, that would be 2 pi. And of course, that would take exactly 60 seconds. So I know the angle that we're cutting out is 2 pi radians, and we're taking 60 seconds to do that. So our angular speed, if we reduce it, would be pi over 30 radians per second. It's a speed, so we have something divided in time. So there's the angular speed. If I want now the linear speed, it does actually depend on how long our hand is because the, the very tip of the hand is moving a whole lot faster than, say, a point that's on the middle of the hand or a point that's closer to the center. If you've ever seen a, a marching band performance when you have a long line um, of, of um, instruments and they're trying to just go in a circle, well, the the person in the center is really not even moving. He's just kind of rotating. The person in the middle of that line is, is moving a good speed, but the person, the poor person over here playing the trumpet, has to almost run to keep in line with everybody else. So hopefully it makes sense that it depends on how far away from the center of the circle for your linear speed, how fast you actually are traveling. So the linear speed is the radius times your angle divided in time. So in this case, we need to know the radius, which we know it's 10.2 centimeters. And I'm going to take that by the same angle. I'm going to say that we're just going to go one full circle because I know that that happens exactly in 60 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and do this math, and I'm going to plug that into my calculator. And when I do, I get approximately 1.068. I'm going to go to three decimal places. Um, and this is centimeters per second. That's just using our calculator and estimating. And finally, my last question is, what is the area of the clock? So it's actually the entire area of this circle. It's not just a piece of the pie, a piece of pizza or something like that, but I am going to be using this sector area. So that means that my area is going to be 1 half times my radius squared times my angle. And the entire angle, this time I definitely have to use 2 pi because I'm looking for the entire area, the entire circle. If I were just looking for half of it, I'd use 1 pi, or a fraction of it, I'd use a f certain fraction. Plug, the, plug that into the calculator, and we'll approximate that. 
and that is approximately 326.851, and my units are centimeters squared, or square centimeters. So that's just plugging into some formulas. We do need to know what angle we're talking about, and I just used the easiest one, which is full circle. So here's our final problem. I like this problem. A child, oh child, jeez. A child is spinning a rock at the end of a two-foot rope at the rate of 180 revolutions per minute, or RPMs. I drew a picture of it, and he's a fancy, fancy child. He's got his top hat on. Um, so he's spinning this rock around on the end of this rope. Hopefully he's not going to hurt himself or somebody else, but um, I don't know. So he's spinning this around, and it's going around 180 times every minute. Okay, and he's going to let go at some point. But um, right now I want to figure out what is the angular speed. Again, angular speed is the angle that it's traveling the, 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 around the circle and divided by the time that it is. Well, we only know one thing. We do know that he's traveling, it's going 180 revolutions per minute. Okay, so it's going around 180 times in every minute. So that means 180 revolutions per minute. That is 180 times around a circle. That's 180 times my one circle angle of 2 pi. This angle that's happening with this rock is actually 360 pi. So we're going 360 pi in one minute. That's our angular speed. That is 360 pi radians per minute. That's what the angle that's being cut out is. Now, he's about to let go. And what I want to find now is what is the linear speed of the rock when the rope is released. I hope this makes more sense in terms of the circle, angular versus linear. So it's traveling around in a circle right now. I guess it's going this way. It's traveling around in a circle this way. But as soon as it's let go, it's going to travel in a linear distance. I think, I think that sort of makes sense that it's got a linear speed. Okay, so linear speed is the radius times the angle divided in time. I do know that it's a two-foot rope, so we're talking about two feet. And I do know the angle we just found was 360 pi. And that's all happening in one minute. So we now know that this rock is traveling 720 pi uh, feet per minute. That's how fast we're going. Now, I don't know if this, if you have any idea how much speed this actually is. I know, I frankly don't. I don't, I don't usually measure in feet per minute. Miles per hour makes a whole lot more sense to me because I travel in a car a whole lot, um, so I know what miles per hour is. So why don't we use our unit analysis and actually see how fast this is? 720 pi feet per minute convert it to miles per hour. So we're going to use our uh, unit analysis. You might have learned this in um, uh, chemistry class with stoichiometry, one of my favorite topics. So really we just need a couple different um, uh, conversion factors and things like this. Since I'm going to miles per hour, I'd like to start off with something that has miles in the numerator. So I know that one mile is 5,280 feet. So that's kind of nice. I need the mile to be in the numerator because I'm talking about miles per hour eventually. So right now I know that this is a true statement. I'm going to multiply that by something. I need to cancel out feet. So now feet has to be something in the numerator. And I do know that something that we just found. We know that there's 720, probably not going to have enough room there, 720 pi feet per one minute. That's helpful because now my feet units will cancel away. And now I would have miles per minute. Miles per minute is not what I need. I want miles per hour. So now I need something up here that has minutes. And I know that 60 minutes is in one hour. And that should do it. My minutes now cancel away. And I've got miles per hour. So all I need to do is crunch all this number, all these numbers together. I've got 1 times 720 pi times 60 all divided by 1 times 1 times, well, 5,280. So when I do that in the calculator, I'm going to approximate my miles per hour. And that is approximately 25.704 miles 
per hour. So that is a pretty fast rock. So those are some of our formulas that we can use with our radian idea. Thanks for watching this tutorial, and we will practice more of this in class. Have a good one.